So I think we're going to begin. It's already 10 till. Um, I realized that with creation care today, we could have talked about nature, but I chose not to talk about nature primarily because I think for most of us, I think that's a place we go to so often. <laughs> yeah, I thought it's just too familiar. Um, so today we're going to be listening to God by means of our inner desires. And I'm also going to add another one, listening to God in silence. <clears throat> so we're going to do try to get through two of them today. We'll see if I can do that or not. Um, let's pray. So gracious God, we thank you that you are present with us, that you want to speak to us, even in the depths of our hearts. You uh, help us to have ears to hear and, and hearts and minds to receive what you have. In your name, amen. Uh, desire. What's desire? What is it? How, how would you define desire? A want. A want? But almost a deeper want. Yeah. I don't know. I feel a like yearning. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's a good one. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, dictionary definition, a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Ooh. That was one definition. <laughs> um, a man named Roland uh, Rollheiser in a book called Holy Longing said, desire is the straw that stirs the drink. Is the straw that stirs the drink. Um, he also wrote a few pages later, spirituality is ultimately about what we do with that desire. Spirituality is what we do with our desires. Um, Psalm 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. What's that mean? God meets your needs. Pardon? God meets all your needs. God meets your needs. Okay. Anyone else? What's it mean? Yeah. I think God wants us to have joy. So God will give us some of the things that we want. Okay. So as God long will as they're us... gonna be good for us. Okay, <laughs> okay. And according to his but yeah. <laughs> Might it mean take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires that he desires for you. Yes, sure. That's a little different than what you want. <laughs> what we want. Um, so God speaks to us in a sense in our in, in the depths of who we are. A part of who we are is our desires. Um what do TV ads try to tell you to do? Better, better, more. Yeah. <laughs> TV ads are always focused in a sense on creating a greater desire for us. So desires then can end up being very superficial, or they can be in the depths of who we are. Thomas Merton said, if I find God, I will find myself. And if I find my true self, I will find God. What's that mean? <laughs> What's he saying? Say it again. If I find God, I will find myself. And if I find my true self, I will find God. What in the world does that mean? To be at one with God? To be at one with God? 
<laughs> well, God created us with <laughs> desires. Mm -hmm. And when you're in communion, maybe you understand what those desires, you know, how they relate to God. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it's a challenging statement, I think. Um, but I think as we really seek to understand who we are, who we are is part of who God is. God created us in his image. Today's sermon. Um, so to find myself is truly to find, in a sense, those inner desires that we have. Um, in Mark 10, there's a story of how John and uh, James and John came to Jesus and said, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. <laughs> and Jesus said, well, what is it that you want me to do for you? What did they want? They wanted positions of power, prestige, significance. When Jesus came into his glory, whatever that kind of now. In the same chapter, in the same chapter of Mark, Jesus came to blind Bartimaeus and said, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, my teacher, let me see again. Well, James and John didn't get what they wanted, <laughs> but blind Bartimaeus did. What's the difference between those two? What's the difference? I think the regained vision would give him a better, well, he get to see Jesus, but a better uh, situation of where he is in his life okay. and allow him also to serve. And allow him to serve too. I'm wondering, any, anyone else, first of all, what's the difference between James and John wanting positions of power, significance, authority, and blind Bartimaeus, who wanted simply eyesight. Well, that's kind of a basic need to me. It's a basic need. I mean, for me, I wouldn't would want to be blind, but yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And he had faith, probably. And, but the other ones did, too. So, But you're not asking to gain power over yeah. people. Right. right. That's, yeah. okay. exactly. that's exactly what I was yeah. thinking. He's, he's yeah. not doing it. Oh, let me get my sight so now I can be in charge of everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in a sense... James and John are simply asking for very, very superficial kinds of things. Uh, and things that don't. What if they thought that they were superficial? What if they thought if they gained those things, they would be more, more useful to Jesus? Okay. But they, they didn't crouch it that way. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't crouch it that way. Oh, I see. They serve you. Yeah. 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 For blind Bartimaeus, in a sense, that was his his true earnest longing for his the depths of his being. That's what he wanted. So well, having gone through that with my son who was blind for several months, about seven months, um, he felt worthless. Uh -huh. And the simple being able to drive, take his his wife through her medical treatment, things like that were a great achievement. Yeah. Okay. Maybe sometimes sight is kind of used as a, a metaphor for insight uh -huh. or knowing or mm -hmm. understanding. Actually, I think with blind Bartimaeus, he ends up following Jesus. <laughs> I think the two situations, God is is being glorified differently, right? So if he heals someone from blindness, that brings his, like Jesus is showing his div divine presence as well. Mm -hmm. Like handing power to someone is something very human. It's something that anybody could do. I mean, technically, you know, within his own court or whatever, but, but it also shows who God is to the world more 
to heal a blind man than it does to just hand something out to his buddies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, John Eldridge, who wrote The Journey of Desire, said, quote, the depth of our the depth of our heart, our desires, is where we must go to meet God. <laughs> Think of that. The depth of our heart, the depth of our desires, is where we must go if we are to meet God. Seems like all this is kind of slanted towards relationship and relational. And that book you talked about today is a book that touched me pretty deeply. How to know somebody deeply by uh, David Brooks. Um, I'm going to go with this. His um, focus was not being superficial to get to know somebody so well, not so you could tell them what to do, but so that they would know themselves better. And I think some of this has to do with, I guess, knowing ourselves, but also being in a relationship. Okay. Being in relationship. Knowing ourselves and being in relation. I'm just saying self examination. I mean, you do. You if, if you're going to go to the deepest part of your heart, you really have to go deep into yourself. Mm -hmm. um, Is that important? I think so. Well, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. But yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, you were you were taking back. Yeah. 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 Yes, I, I, I do agree. <laughs> I was gonna say that, that gets down to the depth of what your motivations are. I think if you sit still long enough, you'll see maybe why you're doing or maybe why somebody else is doing what they're doing. A.W. Tozer say, says or wrote, God wants to be wanted. God wants to be wanted, which is a a desire. And then in the book Backpacking with the Saints by <laughs> Belden Lane, he says, Our panting for God is but an echo of God's own panting for us. I, I like that too. We're going to switch just a bit here and go to silence. No, not going to go to silence, but, but listening to God in silence. Psalm 4610 says, be still and know that I am God. What's your experience of being still? It's not easy. Pardon? For me, it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay. Okay. We talked about the connection to nature too. So to me, some of my most touching times when I have worked hard to get someplace and then the sense of peace I have looking out and yeah just that connection. I was I was gonna go to nature too. The the times that it's easiest for me to be still are honestly standing at the beach on a sunny day with just hearing the waves. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be a sunny day. <laughs> with the warmth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why I love our back deck because I can hear the waves through the straight, uh, even from there. And yeah. In a sense, being still is extremely um, countercultural in our society today. Um, everything in our society is kind of upward bound and movement and activity and, and a rush to do things. To be still, to be still is sometimes just about a mortal sin. <laughs> We're not supposed to be still. We have to keep going and moving. But on being still, then we become, in a sense, spiritually um, emaciated just about. The only time, maybe the only time sometimes even Christians are still is Sunday morning worship, and that's not a very uh, still time. <laughs> um, so let's ask a question first of all. What is stillness? What is it not? 
What are some of the things that silence, stillness is not? What would you say? How would you answer that? What's it not? <laughs> it's not preoccupation. It's it's not preoccupation. I'm just thinking about whether it's noise or movement or it's where my thoughts are going so many other places that I'm not seeing deeply. I'm not feeling deeply. I'm not. To me, the first time I think I felt stillness was during yoga. And it, to me, it takes it took another culture bringing their practices in. And because I don't think yoga was typically our practice, but it's, it's amazing how when I'm holding still and yeah, then I'm not. Focusing, I'm not looking. It's not so much outward as it is more of a turning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? What is it not? Well, not serving. Is it not what? Serving. It's not serving. Okay. And what do you mean by that? Well, it's not. If you're still, if you're not in action and doing some of the things the Lord okay. wants you to do. Okay. So is that bad? Well, yes. If, if the Lord is guiding you to do it and you're being still. Okay. So if the Lord is guiding you, isn't it interesting in Mark, I think about chapter two, I don't know, one or two. Jesus has the people, he was in Capernaum, all of the people come to him uh, in the evening to be healed. And what's he do the next morning before daybreak? He goes up in the mountains and prays. And there he learns from his heavenly father that he has to go to other towns too. Yeah. How did he know to go to other towns when all the people in Capernaum were eating out of his hands? He spent some time in silence, in stillness. Yeah. And you got to have a balance. You have to have a balance. Yeah. Exactly right. You do have to have a balance. And our problem is, in our society today, is even for most Christians, we don't have a very good balance. Um, uh, some of the things I've identified, well, or somebody has identified and I've written them down, I can't remember which. Silence is not an escape from the real world. It is not an escape from responsibility, nor the avoid avoidance of doubt and worry. Silence is not simply a person who sits to think, um, a person who simply sits and stares at nothing. That's not silence. Silence is not an attempt to find peace. It's not a way to find God. For God actually is the one who finds us. Silence is not a painkiller. And silence is not a way to get away from the people you don't like. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Sometimes, yes. So when we're talking about silence, what are we talking about then? Especially in the light of prayer. Maybe a quieting of our minds and an openness. Okay, a quieting of our minds and an open. <laughs> Anyone else? We're not silent at some point during that prayer. We don't hear what God is telling us. Okay. If we're not silent at all, if we're always talking, then we have a hard time listening to what God might be saying. It almost feels like silence is the preparation. I can only compare it to uh, in teaching. I would have like an hour, hour and a half before kids would come in and just that time of being able to concentrate and think about, I mean, it was a way to think about the day, I guess. I think about that for maybe for God. Okay, just to think about 
Okay. It is a form of the athletes. Okay. <laughs> so silence is a way of listening to the depths of who we are in Christ. And that's a hard thing for us to do. It is countercultural. Silence is a way of listening to the depths of who we are in Christ. Um, I looked up silent or stillness in the dictionary. Sorry, I have to put glasses on to read sometimes. Um, it talked about uh, a place of rest, a free from sound and noise, uh, as silence is free from turbulence or commotion, peaceful, tranquil, calm. I think of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And another way of translating that is he leads me beside waters of rest. And I love that way of looking at that. Mm -hmm. Waters of rest. So I have my quiet times with Jesus. And I always go to the water. Some of you have talked about going to the mountains. Uh, for me, it's always the water. Um, Psalm 62.10. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. Uh, the Psalms are full of the issue of silence and waiting for God. Uh, maybe that's one of the reasons I like it. I think, though, that stillness and silence are not the same all the time. Right. And one thing I would say, like, just kind of going back to the comment that sometimes people, some of their stillness is, is going to church on Sundays. And for me, that is a place of stillness, mm -hmm. um, even though it's not silent. And I just think for some people, things can be different. And, and and I'm not saying that we shouldn't stretch ourselves to try new things, but um, like for me, I have a real place of quiet and calm in a church, in, in our church service, even though there's a lot of commotion going on mm -hmm. that I don't have outside of the building. Okay. And so mm -hmm. I just, um, I think sometimes in Christian culture, we really emphasize certain ways of interacting with God or certain ways of doing things. And I think I, for a long time, I felt like I was like broken and wrong because I couldn't do those things well. And so I just, some people really connect with those things. And there's a reason why they've stayed in a part of the Christian culture for a long time, because a lot of people do gain benefit from it. But I just want to put the the thought out there that some people might feel or feel things out a little differently and then that's okay. Like it doesn't have to be a prescribed path. And I think for some people, music is a way of being still. Mm -hmm. Having that, whether it's loud or not, but uh, I, I picture for me, music sometimes is a quieting type mm -hmm. of thing. So yes, I, I do agree with that. But, Stillness comes in a lot of different shapes and forms for people. Silence is stillness and silence. Are they the same? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I'm not sure if I know if stillness and silence are the same or not. Uh, because I've also felt periods of stillness being with really close friends that you just have those people that you like your who you are is really knit together and they know you really well. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in the presence of those people, even though there's lots of conversation and some of it may be meaningful and some of it may be just banter or whatever, for me that is a place of stillness mm -hmm. because it's a place I don't have to stress and I don't have to work and I don't have to try. It's just a place of being. Mm -hmm. And so for me, even though there's noise in the room, 
that's a place of rest for me. Mm -hmm. And I think God uses that too, you know? So I think for those of us who have busy minds, I think there can be other ways that I can. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. I actually have a friend that said to me, our culture values human doing, not human being. Yeah. And that was not, it's not all in the Bible. (laughs) But, you know, when you talk about your friend, that was my friend who told me, that and when we're together we're doing but it's more about being being present being together being being able to be who i am in that space i remember when nancy and i first met in our first times together we talked a great deal and now we can be silent and just being with each other is sometimes enough. We don't always have to be talking. Um, we call but that's a different way again. Go ahead. We call it parallel play in my house. Parallel play. Very good. Yeah, I like that. Too. But the undercurrent seems to be warmth and feeling welcome. It's yeah. Like yes. And I think in with people that you don't know or that you're uncomfortable with, it's very hard to be silent and still even. Because it's like if you're uncomfortable with somebody, it's like there has to be something being said just to help. I, I don't know. That that's my gut feeling anyway. Um, just thinking, I mean, I don't know, I'm pondering the difference, you know, if there is between silence and stillness, but one, one thing that kind of came to mind is that I wonder if on, on some level silence is like in order to stillness in a way, that silence is something that we, um, you know, we can, you know, practice in, in, in order that, I, I don't know, so like, I think it's like silence there's on one level, it's just, you know, no sound, right? I mean, just to sit in my, maybe in my office or something like that. But there's a different feeling that I get, you know, um, if you ever go out in the country someplace or, you know, or the forest or somewhere where there's, there is no sound, mm-hmm. not even really the wind blowing necessarily, but it's just, there's a different stillness in that present than I can ever accomplish in my office, yeah. you know, and, and, yeah. and so something, you know, that, that envelops and, and that, that, might be working toward the stillness piece. I think of, um, you know, how, uh, you, you know, when you're in deep conversation with somebody, you know, that you're, you know, your breathing patterns or you're walking with somebody, your, your, your steps kind of start matching, um, you know, your heartbeats, you know, you go at the same time. There's the stillness is for me, um, experiencing in the presence of God, you know, and, 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 um, yeah, and, and, and feeling more attuned with what God might be speaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is a part of, I mean, how many times in the Gospels does Jesus go up into the mountain to pray? It, 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 it's repeated a number of times. Um, and it's like, and that prayer is, I think Nancy said, she couldn't have always been talking. There had to prayer. If prayer is a conversation with God, then it has to be a two-way conversation or it's a monologue. Mm-hmm. Um, so somewhere along the line, we need to also learn to be still, be quiet with God, to allow him to say something to us. Um the difference between stillness and silence could be intent. Keep going. Um, <clears throat> well, I can sit in my office and be silent or still. Yeah, start silent, we'll say. Um, maybe petting the cat maybe looking out the window 
But if I want to be, if I want to move into prayer, that silence changes to stilling my mind, not, not, not getting any um, feedback from the cat or looking out the window, but changing my intent of what I'm going to be doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that probably isn't very good for the rest of you because uh, those words, if you look it up in the Bible, stillness doesn't have anything to do with God. Or, I don't know. know. Be still it's, and know that I am. I, I know. I'm, in the, no, I don't mean Bible. I'm sorry. In the oh. dictionary. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> My intent was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elijah or Elisha or whatever that heard God's voice finally in the stillness. In the yeah, yeah, not in the not in the fire wind, or wind, in, yeah, but in a sheer. In, in, I don't know what the, what what's that phrase in the in the sheer quietness in the, in the sheer stillness. I was yeah. in a contemplative prayer group um, for several years, and the leader of the group. Her goal was for us to be still and um, just see God, and it was impossible. Anyway, <laughs> her technique to use was envision a river with little boats. And if your mind starts to wander, watch those little boats go down the river. Try that. It doesn't work. You think, oh, a red boat. Oh, well, I know that guy. <laughs> it, it, it's very distracting, but she had all these weird little techniques to get to stillness. I don't know that a technique, um, I haven't found one that works for me. I don't get there. I will say that I, I probably... I would say I'm a type A person. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so I remember setting a timer on my phone for five minutes to see if I could sit still. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, but I do think yoga has probably been the. It was hard to go to yoga. It was very unproductive <laughs> time. Yeah. Um, but I remember being able to go back and focus on my breath because, you know, part of what they say is, okay, your mind wanders, that's normal. Go back to your breathing. And I still do that some. I'll go out six, and I have to go outside, otherwise, I see work. I have to go somewhere where I can't see what needs to be done. <laughs> and I don't set the timer anymore, but I also don't feel guilt if it doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think there is something about going back to my breathing. When mm -hmm. I want to go to sleep at night, that's what yeah. I do. My mind won't stop me because my mind's not silent. No. <laughs> um, and so I think that has helped. It relaxes my body and does help my brain to quit going around. Yeah. yeah. And I do the same thing. I, I try to... <laughs> Nancy would say I'm, I'm, I'm constantly trying to be a contemplative, and I'm not a very good one. <laughs> um, but I am focusing much more on my breathing now. Um, and it does help me as my mind wanders. I realize I, once I catch that I am wandering off somewhere, it takes me a while. Um, then I begin to just focus on my breathing again, the intake and the ex intake and exhaling and it, it does help for me uh, and sometimes I add what I call a prayer word Jesus or Abba especially um, and that I add that to, to that sometimes we are going to take a few minutes in silence uh, and so when we do this, one, get comfortable. Um, you might want to ask God, what is it that God wants to give you? 
That is, what is what is God's real desire for you? <laughs> um, so his his desires for you. Um, and then if you do struggle with just being still and silent, um, you might try the breathing and, and being aware of your breathing in and out. And I know for some, we'll, we'll, we'll take just even a couple of minutes. And for some, a couple of minutes might be way too long. <laughs> and for others, way too short. Um, but give it a try. And especially ask God, what is it that God wants you to have as your desires? I'll try to time the okay. camera. How long was that? 
Uh, about four minutes. <laughs> That's, okay, so tell me what it was like. Uh, I started making lists. <laughs> okay. The little boats were getting smitten. <laughs> you know, no, it was good. It was good, it was good enough. Enough. I didn't stay on the topic. I just started thinking about it God in other ways, but uh -huh. it was good. That's okay. How was it for others? <laughs> <laughs> It was good. Mm -hmm. And in what way was it good? What does that mean? Well, I did, you know, like I did the whole thing of focus on breathing, but I could hear, you know, like I could hear kids' voices and laughter and, and just it was it was just a good time to just be in the present. And you know, try and have my mind open and not thinking about what I was going to do next or do this. And you know, it was good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? What was it just like for you right now? Frustrating. Frustrating. <laughs> okay. Frustrating. Because I couldn't control them because I had started the list before I left home this morning. <laughs> yeah. And I know when I'm going back to it, I started off thinking, okay, I know why I need to do deep breathing because of all I have on my plate. So then I was going back to all the reasons I need to do it. <laughs> and the list that I do that I'm going home to was the things I'm having to do. I was about ready to go into downward dog. Yeah. We right. <laughs> <laughs> don't have our yoga <laughs> I think the thought that came to me though was that this is about connection and that's I think what I'm looking for is connection and I, I was thinking too that you know God is described as a still small voice and I thought if that's what I need to be looking for I need to be a little quieter a little more still because I, I think I look for bigger louder broader not necessarily but yeah I think that's some good connection and stillness okay so did anything so connection came for you frustration um did anything else come to somebody come to you in that time what kind of what what and when i say that it's always in our thoughts you know i don't know how god speaks to us then in our thoughts um uh, and our feelings i guess but um were there thoughts or feelings that came to you in that time? I have to admit, yes, because there are <clears throat> some things I am somewhat responsible for, and I have very strong attitudes as to why. And right away, I was being told, look at the other side and the positive side of going the other direction. And that wasn't what I was being silent for, but that came very okay. strongly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I won't say it's all bad. <laughs> so one of the things I've done in the last week is I've been on the beach probably four days. And yesterday I was there and I watched an eagle take up the shadow of the sun mm -hmm. and go ahead and take it up into the tree. So, I mean, all of the things I'm reliving as in those four minutes is amazing when you think about it. But it's not that at the time that it was that significant to me. Often when I'm outside, it's when I'm away again. I'm going to go back to where I was in my mind with the picture or the feeling. So I don't know that it hit me that much yesterday. I was trying to get my exercise in because I need that too. <laughs> but um, I remember standing still long, long enough to watch the eagle fly mm -hmm. up into a tree carrying you know, this yeah, fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything? I was always confused as to whether that um, in this group that I was in, when she'd say, okay, let's go to silence. I didn't know if I was supposed to be praying at that point or thinking of nothing. And that always was very confusing for me because nobody ever said that. Mm -hmm. Okay, what am I supposed to do when I go to silence? Did anything come to you in this 
four minutes? Well, I prayed first. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that helped a little bit. Okay. Okay. I tried not to look at boats. <laughs> <laughs> this practice for me, um, it's making me more aware because I struggle with some of these things and how how what stillness looks like for me. Um, I I felt a sadness because there's people um, who have neurodiversity issues that can't, and I think we have to think about that. People that need something different, mm -hmm. and I don't know where I'm going with that. I just. So I have a friend that's um, been handicapped for quite a while, and that's where I go back. What is it going to do? What is it going to do? What do you she can't do? Mm -hmm. And my dad now has dementia, and he's sighted and heard and hearing impaired. And he's still a human being, and I almost didn't make it through the service this morning because he lived with strength to music yesterday, but it did not have the words. And he was saying, This is my father's <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, I, I don't know what his world is like. Yeah. yeah. I don't. But he's still a human being. Right. You're talking, Sarah, when you think of uh, being in a state of flow, that um, I get there different ways. I mean, <laughs> it's often crafting. But I, I love that sense that time has lost its kind of boundaries or whatever and, and when I'm crafting I love that feeling and it, it happens many other times but to me I don't know somehow that really doesn't what that right getting there it to me is focusing on the things that you love most and that's when I can get to that point because it's not something I can make happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we can make our mind be still <laughs> and quiet. I I don't know. I don't think we can. Mm -hmm. I think maybe there are techniques. Breathing is one that helps me to to do that. It is interesting to me when we go to bed. Nancy can be in, in bed, and she can be in bed and be in prayer. I have never been able to pray when I try to. When I wake up at three o'clock or two o'clock in the morning, I I don't pray. I, it's prayer in bed is is an anathema. <laughs> <laughs> um, I it's just strange. So yeah, there's different things. I thought I was I was trying to be still with my eyes open, and I was well, looking out. Out, out of the vision out there, and the trees were quiet and they weren't moving. But I could see the reflection of this tree <laughs> in that window, which was really moving a lot. And I, I, I actually looked at the, the wind blowing. Why are the trees blowing on that side? So then I don't think they're being still, and this is not being still. And I, so you, God is talking to two different people. But pretty soon. The wind caught up with them there, <laughs> and it started, and uh, it's like, <coughs> that's maybe how God works, is that some people are still, others are active, and eventually, yeah. God will empower <coughs> someone else to now start to be active after they've had a time of still. But, because you know, I'm just like, why is that much moving? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the science of me going on, you know, it's like, what, the wind, you know, why is it windy out of here and not over here? But eventually, it, the wind did go there, and I was just like, so I, I guess I was thinking, God can coexist in stillness and in the movement, and then that's probably okay, you know. But my mind wasn't still because I was focusing on like, huh, oh, that's what happened, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, if I try to be still, I can never have my eyes open. Because that brings way too much stimulus to me. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Well, okay. Again, thank you. Uh, I, I I thank Sarah for bringing in some other issues for us that we need to be aware of.
And I'm not always aware of those issues. Um, I, I become pretty singular in my focus sometimes. And I need to expand that. I, I thank you for that. Um, next week will be the last session here for me. And we're going to talk about what does it mean to have a spiritual companion or a spiritual director? Um, and that would kind of the focus. And I might expand out beyond that. Who knows? <laughs> I never know. Let's pray. Thank you, gracious God, that you expand our thinking, our thoughts, that you are definitely not limited. And that your desire is for us to constantly be growing, maturing, and also listening to your still small voice within, however we do that. In your name. Thank you. Thank you.